These guys again? And there's a skit, of course. You know, all this reminds me about what our textbook says about vestigial structures. Vestigial structures are inherited from ancestors, but have lost much or all of their original function due to different selection pressures acting on the descendant. I'm not sure why she sounds like she's being punched in the stomach while she says this, but I guess it's difficult to do multiple takes or something. Anyways, notice what the definition is saying. They have lost much of their function, meaning that they can still have some of it. But it's also talking about its original function, meaning that they can have new or additional functions and still be vestigial. This definition alone destroys just about everything that they will say in this video, but let's keep going anyways. So they're saying that animals and people have leftovers in their bodies that once served a function in our evolutionary ancestors? No, they've lost much or all of their original function. The example they give here is the dolphin's hip bones. They're saying its ancestor used to walk on land, but once the dolphin evolved to live in water, it has useless leftover hip bones. What's funny is scientists recently discovered that marine animals, like whales, need these bones during mating season. Okay, so they have some of their original function, but lost much of it. The study was published in a 2014 article in the science journal, Evolution. Wait, wait, wait. The name of the journal is Evolution. Yep. The one that claims they've discovered a purpose for these bones, which goes against the whole idea that these bones are mere evolutionary leftovers. Still demonstrating that you don't know what you're talking about. Look, whether they are useless or not doesn't actually matter. What's important is that they indicate that they once served a different purpose. That is what makes them evidence for evolution. So, in the textbook, they call them useless, but in reality, these bones help the dolphin reproduce and survive. I love it when they do this. This would be at least the second time that they stated something about their textbooks that they showed us were wrong. Here's what the textbook says as they showed us earlier. It says that the hip bones once played a role in terrestrial locomotion, but this function was lost. It's not saying that they are useless, just that they no longer do what they did in the past. If you want to refute evolution, then actually read what evolutionary ideas are, instead of creating a straw man. Exactly. And they say the same thing about humans. They point out that our coccyx, the tailbone, is left over from when we had tails. They think we used to have tails? Yeah, but it's just the end of our backbone. I mean, it has to end somewhere, right? Of course it has to end somewhere, but that's not what makes us think it is vestigial. Its structure indicates that it once served a different purpose, as does the fact that human embryos have tails. We have good reason to believe that it is an evolutionary remnant. It's also the anchor for a bunch of muscles, right? Yes. Tiny muscles, tendons, and ligaments connect to it, and it supports something called the pelvic diaphragm. This whole system holds a bunch of muscles and organs in place, like the bladder. So, how does that make it not a remnant of a tail? So, what other things did they say are leftovers? The tonsils. I've never heard anyone claim this. We've been aware for a while now that tonsils play an important role in the immune system, so I'ma skip this. They also talk about the appendix and say that it has a function and therefore isn't vestigial, showing that they don't understand the definition or concept of a vestigial organ. Yes, it has a function, but it indicates that it once had a different function as part of the digestive system. Same arguments as before. Charles Darwin thought vestigial structures were a winning argument for evolution. And a German anatomist by the name of Robert Wiedersheim made a list of 86 vestigial structures in the human body. And later, evolutionists expanded the list to about 180. But modern science has now shown that every one of them has a purpose. In his book, Wiedersheim defined vestigial organs as those which were formerly of greater physiological significance than at present. That's what he was listing, and that's what a vestigial organ is. But there are organs that he wrote down that we still have not found a genuine use for. That includes the sternalis muscle, nipples on men, and wisdom teeth. But if you really want truly useless organs, humans have vomeronasal organs which are not connected to anything and serve no purpose, but other animals use it to detect pheromones. We have muscles in and around our ears that can't do anything at all, but other primates and other animals use the same muscles to move their ears to listen to particular sounds. The hymen hardly does anything at all, but some animals use it to keep semen in the vagina. So, they didn't know about these organs' functions in the body? No, they assume that since people could survive without them, that these were totally useless. Then they reasoned in a circle, arguing that since they were useless leftovers of an evolutionary past, 
they demonstrate our evolutionary past. So reasoning in a circle is bad. Uh, yeah, it's when we assume our conclusion, then use that assumption to prove our conclusion. It's crazy. How is that circular reasoning? How is indication of evolution being evidence of evolution not reasonable to you? How is this the logic that you can't get behind? We're not assuming that these structures come from evolution. Evolution is the best explanation for them. So what do modern evolutionists say about these organs, now that science has discovered that every one of them have functions after all? About 1 in 18 people are born with an extra nipple. It's not a mole, it's a genuine nipple that forms along milk lines and serves no purpose. Just thought you should know. They now claim that vestigial organs can have functions, after all. And those functions may have evolved after the organ spent time being useless. Wow, talk about imagination. Wow, you're so close. You're so close to understanding what the hell you're talking about. No one ever said that vestigial organs absolutely had to be useless. Not only was this mentioned in the book that we discussed earlier, but also by Charles Darwin himself over a hundred years ago. In On the Origin of Species, he says, and I quote, an organ serving for two purposes may become rudimentary or utterly aborted for one, even the more important purpose, and remain perfectly efficient for the other. An organ may become rudimentary for its proper purpose and be used for a distinct object. If anything, you're just arguing against your middle school teacher because that's the only person who would have told you that they were useless. This is not hard to look up. It's kind of sad that they think we're made up of useless parts, instead of acknowledging the design by Jesus the Creator. I don't know where you're getting the idea from that Jesus was the creator, because he never claimed to be. Yahweh was the one who created us in the Bible. But if either of them did, he did a poor job. The wisdom teeth alone are terrible design, but if we evolved, then perhaps our ancestors had wider jaws, and the extra teeth helped them eat plant material. We have allergies, so completely harmless things can make us sick. The funny bone is completely unprotected, as are the large jugular veins. The brain is is incredibly susceptible to trauma, and it's incredibly difficult for an infant to naturally survive its first few years of life. Hell, it's difficult for the mother to naturally survive childbirth. You probably don't know this about me, but I have Tourette's syndrome. I was born with it. That means that before I was conceived, God, who knew the amount of hairs on my head, just said, hey, let's give this one Tourette's. It'll be funny. 